Hi, I'm Rick Hunter and I'm one of the ex uh, explorers on the, the exploration team for uh, the University of Edwardesrand. I'm a, one of the exploration technicians, one of the guys that first goes into the cave systems and explores them looking for fossils and new, uh, new caves in the area. And so you were someone you're being kind of modest about your role in things. You were quite possibly one of the two people that without what you did we wouldn't be here today being really excited about discovery that hopefully will be announced here in the in the coming weeks. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you actually helped get the Rising Star project started? Uh, uh, it all happened on a Friday evening, the 13th of September. And Stephen and myself came out for a little bit of an exploration of the cave, looking for new routes within the system. We're always with the, with the open eye looking for fossils if we found them. But this evening was specifically meant for exploration and between him and myself we ended up finding the little vertical slot that went down through into the fossil chamber. And, and from there every, all of this happened. And um, you said you were looking for fossils. Now most uh, cavers that I know aren't looking for fossils. No. We, we weren't entirely but we had been asked in the past if we saw, uh, saw anything to keep our eyes open. Okay, and, and who had that come from? Was that from your caving organization? Uh, or? that, that was through one of our colleagues, uh, Pedro Boschov, who had been asked by Lee Berger. Mm, they, they had worked together and Pedro had uh, come through because he wasn't able to get into some of the places. He came through to the, some of the more wiry bunch of us and asked us to look for him. Okay, and so um, you um, tell us a little bit about that night when you um, first went down the slot. Oh, that was actually a rather interesting evening. We attempted to push another area in the cave and after about a half an hour of trying to squeeze into this tiny little area that ended up about the size of a de uh, school desk, we gave up and I asked Stephen if we could explore one of the more technical climbs in the cave and he took me through to the dragon's back. We ended up climbing up the dragon's back and I was video recording with my GoPro and I saw this beautiful uh, uh, Chris, uh, crystalline section at the back and he was in front of me. So I asked him to quickly pop down this little uh, slot in the ground in front of me so I could get over him and record. And when he, uh, he slipped down there, I stepped over and he noticed that the slot actually went down. And I waited up top while he climbed down and he told me to follow him because it went. And that, that is basically how we made the initial discovery. And what was it like when you dropped down into the fossil chamber? Terrifying. <laughs> Why was it? Tell, tell us about the terrifying nature of it. You're going through an area that's well, a 12 meter high uh, crack, which at its widest point was probably about 20, 30 centimeters, and going down to 17 centimeters in certain areas. And all of a sudden, it opens up into this open chamber with a 4 meter drop below you with nothing to hang on to. So you had to cling to the walls and slowly work your way down uh, this precarious climb. And one slip there and you're in trouble. And also the thought of how am I going to get back up when I'm finished with this? <laughs> and so, um, and so is, did you consider the possibilities you saw all those bones? They might be from previous cavers who never made it out. That, that was actually one of, uh, one, uh, one of my first impressions. After seeing a tooth there and a few of the other bones, it's like, okay, this could possibly be someone that came down here. But we carried on exploring a little bit further. It was only when we came back that we actually sat down there and started looking at the fossils that we realized that that molar there does not look like anything but a human. And then there was the mandible and the mandible was, that was pristine, it was perfect. And uh, that was when Stephen and I discussed uh, what we needed to do and uh, after, the, after that caving trip we went up and spoke to Pedro who sent us back with the camera to take, uh, take photos of these boats. Mm -hmm. Didn't you have your GoPro at, at that time? Yeah, but my battery had died. Oh! <laughs> the joys well, of always, technology. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. So, um, so you came back, got, got photos. Yes. And then, can you tell us what happened after that? I, I missed a, a small part of that because uh, we, we came back, we took the photos of everything. And Stephen t uh, had those photos emailed to Pedro and Pedro didn't see them for a few days and then he took a look at them and the evening uh, Stephen went to his house and Pedro saw the photos and got excited grabbed Stephen and drove to Lee's house 
and I'm sitting on Facebook getting the messages from Stephen about what's happening. And I'm hearing all of the excitement and how big this is and how Lee is excited about the situation. Excellent. And then would you say your life changed after that? Totally. Totally. Uh, from that moment, I basically, the, from just using caving as a recreational hobby, it has uh, become a full-time career for me. I've met some of the most important people in my life through caving and through that uh, that specific uh, expedition. It, it has been an outrageous experience. And what was, during the expedition, what was your role in the uh, in the recovery of the fossils and all that that involved? Uh, in most, uh, from the beginning of the expedition, I was basically one of the technical guys that was running uh, electrical wires, doing most of the uh, the communications and camera work, and making sure there was at least support for the uh, the ground guys. And then, as the expedition uh, continued further, I took on the role of a safety officer. Uh, most of the cavers were protecting the scientists, and if anything went wrong, we were there to assist. Okay, cool. And then, so once the um the fossils were all brought out and that was done in less than a month. Um, was it kind of back to normal life for you? Uh, no, that was, that was when I was basically brought in as a, as a cave of, uh, as an exploration technician for the University of Advertis Right. And from then I've been exploring and looking for more sites from then on. So basically your job, it sounds like, is that you get to go out and cave during the week to try and find new stuff? Yes. No, uh, no our, our main goal is basically Monday to Thursday, we're in the field looking in every single cave we can possibly find, some brand new systems, some that uh, have already been discovered and mapped, but we search all these systems to try to find fossils, try to find new extensions, trying to map every possible aspect uh, of the cradle of humankind. And um, I guess this is uh, really hard work for you, right? Incredibly taxing. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Is there anything you want to say to the the folks back, probably mostly in the United States, and but anything? Uh... Curiosity is one of the most amazing things you can have. It really is. Trying to find out what what's beyond something, trying to push yourself to your limits. That's about it. Cool. Well, we really appreciate your time. I know you have to get back underground here in a few minutes because. There is some ongoing excavation happening here. Yes, that's and happening so, right um, now. And so we're going to let you go, but we really appreciate your time and, and effort with us, and thanks a ton for helping make this possible. No, thank you, John.